The Special Operations Executive was a British organization formed during World War II that used espionage as a covert form of diplomacy to combat the German occupation of Europe. They employed agents to train resistance members, gather intelligence, transport supplies, and sabotage enemy war machines, organize resistance forces, and cut enemy supply lines. And although at the time there was much debate about the capabilities of women in the military, their operations in France and Eastern Europe greatly contributed to securing an Allied victory in World War II. In 1936, due to Adolf Hitler's leadership and ideology, Germany began a Nazi invasion across Europe. In 1939, Nazi Germany overtook Czechoslovakia, Austria, Lithuania, and Poland. In 1940, Germany occupied Britain's ally, France. Fearing the growing power of the Nazis, English Prime Minister Winston Churchill acted to prevent a German occupation of Britain. In response, Churchill created the SOE, an organization tasked with espionage and intelligence gathering. He assigned politician Hugh Dalton to the job of recruiting agents. While active, the SOE employed over 13,000 people, 3,200 of which were women, and of these, only a handful of female agents were ever deployed onto the front lines of war. Throughout history, women have played pivotal roles as spies. Despite this, women were the minority of combatants in World War II, mostly because there were social prejudices against their ability to act as competent agents in military missions. There were debates within the British government pertaining to women participating in espionage-related work. This, however, didn't stop women from volunteering and challenging the biases against them. As stated by Historic UK, they, the SOE, grudgingly agreed female spies would have distinct advantages over the men on the ground. Women could travel freely because they were not expected to work during the day. In a 2013 interview, Noreen Riles, a former member of the SOE, states, At first, women were not allowed to be trained, they were not allowed to be infiltrated. And then, um, in January 1941, the authorities realized that a woman is a courier was very much more useful than a man because, you see, a young man wandering around in a town in the middle of the day um, could be caught in a huffle and sent like that to work in, in Germany, forced labour. The female spies of the SOE, similar to traditional diplomats such as ambassadors, represented the interests of the British people by assisting their government abroad during World War II. They promoted democracy and international security by providing crucial military information back to their government, which helped establish negotiations for maintaining or improving their country's relationships with other countries. In June of 1940, after the French surrendered to the Germans, small underground groups began to rebel and fight against the oppressive government instituted by the Nazis in Vichy, France. In this 2009 BBC Time Watch clip, Professor M.R.D. Foote states, F sections agents were intended to do two main jobs. One of them, sabotage. Secondly, they were to help to arm underground movements if ever the French were capable of producing a secret army of guerrilla to operate behind the German lines should an invasion take place. Female SOE agents provided escape routes, anti-Nazi propaganda and intelligence such as places for suitable landings and parachute drops, how much resistance support was available and what locations were safe, all while assisting the Allies in sabotaging enemy equipment to bolster the resistance movement. Virginia Hall was a prominent SOE spy who coordinated supply drops, transported weapons, money, food and medical supplies. Under her command, agents sabotaged railway lines, trains, bridges, and telephone wires. Hull was personally credited with destroying four bridges, severing a key rail line, derailing freight trains, downing telephone lines, and organizing the resistance. She killed 150 Nazis and captured 500 more. She was so successful that the Gestapo launched special missions to capture her, to no avail. Between April and May 1944, the resistance destroyed 1,800 railway engines, causing massive disruption to German equipment mobility. Another agent deployed to France, Nancy Wake, known as the White Mouse for evading Nazi capture, became the most wanted person by the Gestapo. She trained resistance members, set up communications, supply lines, and arranged ammunition drops for parachute. Wake saved hundreds of lives during her time in the SOE, and was the most decorated female spy during the war. In 1943, Noor Nayat Khan became the first female wireless operator to parachute into Nazi-occupied France. While stationed in Paris, Khan aided the French resistance network Prosper by sending intercepted radio messages back to her allies. Khan is credited with setting up the direct communication link that enabled 30 Allied airmen to escape from occupied France. After the rest of the Prosper agents had been captured, Khan was the only operator in the field until her arrest. They were warned right from the beginning that they had a 50% chance of survival, and at first the radio operator's life expectancy in the field was six weeks. 
The Normandy landings, commonly known as D-Day, was an invasion that the Allied forces conducted to liberate France. Over 156,000 Allied troops participated, and their efforts were supported by the resistance who developed weaponry, forged documents, and trained new agents in spycraft. During the invasion, the SOE parachuted nearly 300 agents into the enemy-occupied territory to sabotage transport cars and send information back from behind enemy lines. They managed to delay German troops from causing more damage. In an interview with Amanda Olke, she states, There were so many different roles that women played in the lead-up uh, to D-Day that is not as well known as it should be, and certainly in terms of Virginia Hall. I mean, I can't imagine without that internal support of the resistance to follow up on the invasion, it could have fallen flat. Violet Sabo, Nancy Wake, and Christina Scarbeck were among the deployed agents who organized networks of thousands of resistance fighters, eventually leading them into battle. Christina Scarbeck is best known for smuggling the first film evidence of Operation Barbosa, which was a German plan to attack the Soviets. In December of 1940, she skied back and forth from Hungary through the Carpathian Mountains to Poland in order to deliver the information. During D-Day, Violet Sabo was dropped into France to disrupt German communications. She contacted resistance forces and engaged in gunfire with the enemy and gathered intelligence that guided Allied bombing missions. Sabo was eventually captured and tortured, but she never cooperated with the Nazis or gave away any of her fellow agents and continued to help people in the camps in which she was imprisoned. On February 5, 1945, she was executed and was posthumously awarded the George Cross for her bravery, the highest award given by the British government for gallant acts not under enemy fire, and one of the only ones that were awarded to women during World War II of the 11 total ever given to women. Not only did the women spies contribute to the French resistance and the success of D-Day, but they contributed to the war in many other ways. Vera Atkins was responsible for the training, recruitment, and deployment of around 400 agents and briefing them on their missions. When they went missing, she discovered their whereabouts and she honored her dead spies' bravery by tracing their killers and bringing them to justice. Women spies directly communicated with diplomatic sectors using wireless and radio transmissions. Yvonne Cormeau highlights the importance of this role as she set the record for sending more than 400 wireless transmissions from France to London. Cormeau also organized supply drops and sabotaged power and telephone lines, resulting in the isolation of Nazi forces near Toulouse. Although the women spies had considerable success with their efforts during the war, they had to fight for their equality within the military. Women were seen as less capable than men, especially in activities like armed combat and espionage. This outlook framed a cover for them to be incredibly inconspicuous agents. The SOE realized this, and it was one of the reasons they chose to deploy women to aid resistance movements and go behind enemy lines. Women SOE agents serving on the front lines of the war were captured, shot, tortured, and killed by enemy forces, but they received recognition of a lower rank for their military heroism compared to their male counterparts, who received operational medals and knightings. Despite participating in active combat, women received non-operational honors from their countries and governments, simply because they were women. Christina Scarbeck stands as an example of the treatment female spies received for their service in the field after the war. Although she received a number of ribbons for her work, including the George Cross and the French Croix de Guerre, she was not eligible for military honors under enemy fire. She was only paid 100 pounds for her service and spent the rest of her working life as a cruise ship cleaner. Despite the SOE disbanding in 1946, the knowledge of the women's impact carried on within the agencies that followed in its place. Their efforts caused later organizations to persist and employ women at all levels. Today, women's contributions within covert government organizations are outwardly acknowledged, unlike during World War II. A select few have attained high ranks in international espionage agencies, such as Nora Slotkin, the executive director of the CIA from 1995 to 1997. And in 1992, Stella Rymington became the first female director general of the British Civilian Intelligence Agency, MI5, which she held until 1996. As a result of the SOE agents' classified status, their involvement during World War II and the impact they had on D-Day went largely unrecognized by the public until very recently. The information about their work became declassified in the early 2000s, and because of this, the social impact of these women's accomplishments wasn't acknowledged outside of the agencies until much later. The legacy the female spies left behind stands today in literature, film, and press articles documenting their brave contributions. A few of these being Mission Friends by Kate Vigers, The Heroines of the SOE by Bera Lescott, The Invisible Woman by Erica Robick, and the drama film A Call to Spy. Notable franchises such as Marvel make reference to the female spies of the SOE. The espionage, communication, sabotage, and movement of vital resources to resistance troops by female SOE spies made way for the success of D-Day and the defeat of Nazi Germany. In spite of the debate about their competence in the front lines, these brave women proved that they were just as capable as men in war as secret agents and combatants. They risked their lives to gather intelligence and lead resistance forces against the German occupation of Europe, and their use of espionage as a covert form of diplomacy was instrumental in securing an Allied victory.